Hey there and welcome. My name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works, where we do all sorts of things from private trainings to virtual mentorings to hackathons to on-demand learning. Uh, and so what we want to bring to you this month are the new updates for the May 2021 version of the Power BI desktop. Quite a few updates come out with this release. Uh, some things that are just happening in the background, some new data connections, some new ways to connect to your data, uh, as well as some things that you can see right within your report. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So if you've been watching any of our monthly digests, you've learned about the small multiples preview feature. Uh, and what small multiples allow you to do is take a few different kinds of charts. So whether it's a line chart, bar chart, column chart, or even a combo chart of those, you essentially take one of those charts and then you can duplicate that on the page, but each new version of it is going to be split down by a specific category. So let's just take a look at what this does. So right here, I just have a basic line chart where I have the calendar year. I'm going to get the sales amount by the sales territory country. But what if you wanted to see each one of these countries as its separate unique visual? Well, the way we do that is we tap into the small multiples. So for example, I'm going to take just the sales territory country, and now I'm just going to drag it into the small multiples field, which is simply saying, what do you want this dissected by? And as we drag this in here, now we can see everything is, has its, every little place has its own country. And so that's how we choose to dissect it. Well, this used to be a preview feature, but starting in May, this is now generally available. Uh, expect further updates with it in terms of date hierarchies in order to have continuous access scrolling. Uh, and I, I imagine that there's always going to be something new every month coming out for the next few months because they keep updating this feature, but now you don't have to turn it on. So the next thing that came out is, Recently, we have been able to use direct query to connect into our Power BI data sets as well as Azure Analysis Services. Well, one of the drawbacks was with that is the Q&A visual was not supported with that data connection. Well, now you are able uh, to do this. And so how you would do this is first, you got to make sure you turn this on. This is a preview feature you have to turn on. So in order to turn this preview feature on, what we'll do is go up into your file ribbon. And we're going to come on over into options and settings, options, and we'll give this a second. And we're going to go right on over into our preview features. And this is the one that you want to make sure that you have turned on your direct query for Power BI data sets and Azure Analysis Services. Uh, and now Q&A is supported uh, for that. So as long as you have this on, Q&A visuals are now going to work. And the other one that we're going to talk about, so I'll just stay right here. The other new preview feature uh, that you want to turn on is the modern visual tooltips. I'm going to showcase that for you uh, in just a few moments here. All right. So with that being said, let's move into the next part of what has come into our Power BI update for May. So what we have next that we can do and take a look at is our modern visual tooltips, which I just turned on just a second ago. And so in order to turn that on, we turned it on in the preview features. And so from here on out, every time that you open up a new report, this is going to be set to on. But if you have any old reports and you like this new visual tooltip experience, you would need to open up those reports and turn them on individually. So let's say we've opened up an old report and we want this modern visual tooltips to be turned on. What you'll do is go back into your options and settings. And then you're going to come right on down here into your report settings. And then with report settings, if you scroll all the way down, you're going to click use modern vo visual tooltips. So for your old reports, you've got to turn that on for every single one. But for all of your future reports, that is no longer needed. So let's take a look at what the new tooltips look like. So let's come on over here and we'll hover over. So you definitely can see it looks a little bit different, a um, little bit different text. Uh, the box has the little um, just kind of looks a little bit different. You might be saying, Matt, doesn't look too, too different. But do notice that the tooltip isn't showing up in black and white like it normally does. And I did not change this tooltip whatsoever. Because with the new modern visual tooltips, what will happen is it will show a different kind of tooltip based on the theme that you have in your report. So for example, let's say I come up here and change this over, we'll go something crazy, we'll go to the innovate theme. And now when I hover over, now it's different. It's got the black text, it's got the white font. So every time you change your theme, that tooltip will be changed as well. 
And so I'm going to go back on over to Frontier for here. That's not the big deal. Here comes the really great thing that everyone has been wanting, at least everyone I ever do any trainings with, and we talk about drill through pages. And one of the limitations to get to a drill through is your end user needs to know that a drill through has been set up. They have to right click on a data point in order to access drill through. Or we can use one of the other new features that came out last year is where we put a button and the button lights up whenever you've made a selection and a drill through is available. Now it's even easier than that. So let's take a look where I have a drill through set up on my sales first profit margin. So we're going to zoom on in here. I'm going to hover over and notice what we've got. Now, because they know that there is a drill through set up here, it is showing up in the tooltip. And so all I have to simply do is click on that. So we'll go here, let it pop up. I'm going to zoom out a little, drill through, and then all the drill through pages that have been set up are now accessible. So I'm going to hit details. And now I am at my drill through page. So again, I could still do it the old way. I could just do a right click and go to drill through details. But again, your end user has to know that. Now they don't even need to know you've set up the drill through page because as they hover, it shows up. Also notice the other thing that we have. If a drill down has been set up on your visual as we have here, just like we have up here, Normally our drill downs, we would have to select our down arrow or do a right click and do our drill downs. Here we no longer have to worry about it because it's showing up in the tooltips. So if I come on over and I say I want to drill down into 2006, it works picture perfect for us. So this is a nice new feature that they've added in with these tooltips. I really like it. Uh, but you might say, Matt, I don't really like the styling of it. So the, the styles will change based on the theme that you pick. But what if you want to have some individual control? Well, you can format these tooltips as well. So let's say we take, let's say I like the tooltip right here. It's formatted picture perfect. But over here, I want it to be a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the visual itself. And then we're going to come on over into our visualizations pane, go to format, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And we're going to select tooltip. And now I can change the individual pieces about it. So maybe I want uh, the value text color to be a gold here. And I want the drill text and the icon color to be uh, this green. And then the label text color, maybe I want it to be a white. And then the background color, I'm not going to use white so we wouldn't see it. Let's say I go with this orange. I'm probably picking some really bad choices here in colors, but just to show you what you can do, now, when I come on over, you can see, uh, again, I'm the worst at design, but you can see that you can change these tooltips on a level by level or visual by visual basis. So you have that control. And again, you're like, well, Matt, what if I want to change the tooltips for the entire report? So I know when we change themes that the tooltip will update to that theme. Can you just change it for the default behavior? You sure can. In order to do that, you'll go into your view ribbon. And you'll find your theme section and you'll hit your drop down. And then you'll go into customize current theme. And then from here, you'll go to visuals, tooltip. And now you can change the default behavior of all of your tooltips. So if I want the, the default background to always be this uh, color here, uh, let's say I want, I don't know, something like bluish. And we'll go with that. And we'll just leave it as it. So we'll hit apply. Now, when I come over and hover, you can see that the text color is now in that blue. So you have the capabilities to change the, uh, the default tooltips for all of them, or you can do it on an individual uh, basis if you would like to. So that is with your modern visual tooltips uh, turned on. Now, just to note, with that drill, the, the drill actions, that is not supported on some of the visuals as of right now. Uh, so your drill actions are not supported on any report page tooltips, uh, any custom visuals, line charts, area charts, stacked area charts, and your decomposition tree. Uh, that should probably come out sooner rather than later, but that is just one of the limitations right now with the modern visual tooltips. Apart from that, the other thing that they've now allowed uh, is you can remove data sensitivity labels within your report. So if you have any set up, uh, and you want to remove them, it's never recommended, but there was a few people that said they wanted that option, uh, you can do that. And the way that you would remove, if you have any sensitivity labels set up, 
you would go into your sensitivity preview icon, find that sensitivity label, and then just remove it as well. So that is one of the other updates that came out this week, or sorry, this month. Uh, going back into direct query for your Power BI data sets and your Azure Analysis Services, uh, now when you publish as well to the service, you can go into the lineage view uh, to see how that data set is being used. So you can see um, if there's any data flows that are mismatches with it. Uh, you can see what would happen if you change the data set around uh, by any upcoming changes. So that lineage view is now available to you within the Power BI service. The other thing that they got some feedback on is uh, some report users wanted to discourage chaining um, different composite models to make. They didn't want some of their data sets to be used in direct query. Uh, and so now you have the ability to turn off uh, if one of your Power BI data sets is able to be used as direct query. And the way that you do that is you'll come on up to your file ribbon and we're going to go back into our options and settings. And then once we are in our options and settings, we're going to come on down to your current file, publish data set settings. So this is our published data set. So after we publish this, do we want to disable direct query connections to this data set? Because with the new feature that was turned on a few months ago that we were allowed to take these data sets that have been published or Power BI data sets and connect them with direct query. Uh, if you don't want your end users to do that, you simply disable direct query connection to this data set that you publish out. So that is one of the other features that they added into uh, this month's Power BI update. And so we'll get rid of that for now so you know that you have that availability to you. The other thing is your model view updates. And so with the model view, if you've been, if you had the, uh, the preview feature for the, the model view, uh, when you would go into the modeling section, you would get this little ribbon at the top here and it would say, do you want to, whoop, let me do it the other way. Do you want to upgrade to the new model view? Uh, and when you clicked on that, it would upgrade to this what you're seeing here. So we have different icons that show next to the tables. It lets you know if you're in import mode, direct query. Uh, you can change a whole bunch of your properties in terms of what fields do you want to see within the model view. Um, and from there, whenever you would turn this feature on, it would be just for that report. And whenever you would open up a new report, you would have to click upgrade now again. Well, with the May version, you are going to get one screen when you uh, are here and it says, do you want to upgrade to the new model view? Now, this is a little bit different. This time when you click OK, that's it. It's there forever. You don't have to do it for every single report. So if you didn't like the new model view experience, don't turn this on. But if you did, now you do it once and it is set for, uh, set for life, so to speak. The other thing that is now generally available is the new field list. And what we mean by this new field list, and I'll get off the screen here, is the icons have changed based on what kind of fields you have in your data source. So we can see that the Sigma notation is a, definitely a little bit of a different font. Let me find a measures over here. So we have some measures. The calculator icon looks a little bit different. Your date fields will look a little different as well. Still interacts the same way, but you're just going to have a new kind of view of that. And so that is now generally available. You don't have to turn that on as a preview feature. I really like the new fields list. I think it's a little bit easier to read, a little bit more modern. Uh, so that is now just generally on for everybody. There have been some new data source connections uh, with this one. The, the newest one, it was called uh, Equus. So if you've been using or have any data in Equus, if I'm saying that correctly, that is one of your new connectors. There have also been some connector updates to some other ones. So if you use Automation Anywhere, Vena, Azure Databricks, Amazon Redshift, Vertica, Microsoft, uh, Graph Security, those are all things that I would recommend go look into the Microsoft documentation uh, to see what has changed about that data source connection uh, because each one's going to be a little bit different. And for a whole, that is pretty much what has come out with the May version. Uh, now, again, sometimes when you go out to the Power BI service, you'll see something new uh, that wasn't part of the Power BI desktop. So, you know, every time you go out to the service, always be checking for those new features there as well. Uh, and let us know what you thought was the, the best feature for, for this version of May, what you liked about it. 
Uh, like, subscribe. If you're interested in any kind of virtual mentoring or private training, please let us know as well. We would love to help you out. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next month for our monthly digest.